आवाज आ रही है ये फोनों गिराफ से ढूंढो खुदा को दिल से नलाफो गजाफ से اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته viewers of MTA Africa this is future of work your inspiring and educating program where we discuss the ever changing dynamic of the workplace and how we can adapt to these changes i am your host abdul qadir ismail uluwa gwiminga and i'm excited to dive into another crucial topic that affects us all, work-life balance in the digital age. In today's hyper-connected world, it's easier to get sucked into the vortex of constant notifications, emails, and social media. But as we all know, maintaining a healthy work-life balance is essential for our well-being and productivity. So, how can we achieve this elusive balance in the digital era, especially considering the fact that the lines between the workplace and personal life are increasingly blocked and the demand of the digital age often leads to constant connectivity? In this episode, we'll explore practical strategies for setting boundaries, managing technology's impact, and prioritizing self-care. Our goal is to empower the youth with insights and tools needed to lead a more balanced, productive, and fulfilling life. To engage in this discussion, I have with me in the studio Dr. Sonny Taufik Adedayo, a consultant physician at the Federal Teaching Hospital Idoegiti and a senior lecturer at Afebabala University at Doegiti. Ekiti State, Nigeria. Dr. Sahib, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Thank you for having me. I equally have joining me virtually Mr. Abdul Rahman Musa. Mr. Abdul Rahman Musa is a chartered accountant and assistant auditor, currently a senior manager for audit quality in BDO London. Mr. Abdul Rahman, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. These two fantastic guests who will share their expertise and experiences on navigating work life balance in a digital age. But before we get started on this important conversation, join me as we listen to the views of people from the streets on how to maintain work-life balance and how it has shaped the way they interact in the workplace. One of the things I try to do is to ensure that while it's important to spend, because, because of the nature of our work, I spend a lot of time physically with students, a lot of time uh, at my primary place of work, I also have a number of voluntary roles that also keep me engaged, even outside the primary working hours, outside the real work from which I earn a living, uh, that require me to spend a lot of time out of my personal time to be uh, engaged in a number of um, meetings or engagements on uh, electronic or digital platforms. Really, I find it really challenging to disconnect from work outside of office hours. But ways in which I tend to strategize myself is I learn to say no. There are times whereby I would be called as to outside of office hours to try to talk about some work. I tend to tell my client that no, office hours are office hours. And also time to create a timetable whereby I, I set things in time. And I also make use of advanced app whereby I use Google calendars to make sure everything I'm doing is up to time so that I would also have time to for myself and other things. The first thing I do is set boundaries and then there is time management. 
you understand, prioritizing important things. So I use tools like um, Google calendars to do, to do it, sticky notes and, you know, alarms. And also because I spend a lot of time on devices, if I'm not on my system, I'm on my phone. So I try to read hard copy books, you know, to stay away from my device. And also outside work, you find me pursuing passions. You know, I spend time with my families also attending family functions. So. We have listened to what people have to say about maintaining a healthy work-life balance. Dr. Sahib, what do you think are the main challenges of maintaining a healthy work-life balance, especially in this digital age? All right, thank you very much, dear presenter. I well know that work is an important part of life mm. itself. And it is what we generate from our workplace that we shall use to maintain our life. Yeah. So there is that tendency that while we are struggling to get more funds or more opportunities that will be compatible with the growth that we have uh, planned for our own life, we tend to now do more work than balance it with other things in our life. Mm -hmm. But of course, we know that apart from work, the other aspect of life that also need to be taken care of. We have the spiritual life where we need to connect with our God. Hmm. We also have the social life, where we need to connect our families, connect with our friends, and also our good social life will also help us to improve relationship at our place of work. So, Dr. Saab, yes. so what do you think are the main challenges associated with maintaining a healthy work-life balance, especially in this digital age? Yes, uh, thank you very much. We all know that work is an important aspect of life. Mm. In fact, it is the work we do and what we generate from it that actually determine our status as human beings and we also determine how lovely or badly our life can be. So because of this, many individuals tend to concentrate more on work that they do. Mm. And with this, they intend to generate more income and increase their social status in the community and also have a better and good life. However, it must also be remembered that there are other aspects of life. We have the spiritual life where we need to connect with our God, worship Him, and that must also be focused on. We also have the social life. Our family is one of it. Relationship with neighbors is one of it. Relationship with our either nuclear or extended family, and also relationship with people at our place of work. So at times, if an individual does not plan very well, that individual may not be able to maintain a balance between work and other aspects of life. To now make matter worse in this digital age, because of connectivity, people also bring their work home. In those days, when you go to work, you concentrate there, depending on how you work, you work for a few hours and you go home. Mm. And when you are at home, you can do other things apart from work that are important for life growth. However, with this data age, people even bring their work home, concentrate on their laptop, concentrate on their phone, and other aspect of work can also be done at home. So what we have seen is that gradually, other aspect of life is being eroded on by our work environment. So we work at work, we also work at home. And uh, this, affect, and this has affected a lot of things. Some people, their spiritual life had gone away because they couldn't balance it up. So some other people, their family life had gone away and they couldn't balance this. So the challenges that we have with the work now is people do more work than other aspects of their life. And because of digitalization, with our phone, but people work from home now. Mm. People don't go to work, they work from home and they don't do what they should do at home because they are working from home. So the challenges that we are having is the, world, the individuals in the world need more money. And the kind of work that we do, our occupation, our income, determines our social status. In fact, it also gives us the opportunity of having access to a lot of lovely things in the world. If we are poor, if you don't have money, you won't be able to have access to good health care. You don't have access to lovely things in the world. So yes. if you also want a good life, you also want a good work. So while you are not trying to work well to get money, most of the time, you may get that money and you may not have the good life that you even determine to have. Hmm, your so family may crumble, your relationship 
with God in combo, your relationship with neighbors in combo. In fact, we have seen people working and having a relationship with their co workers yeah. at work. So, the challenge that we have now is with digitalization of the world, people are now eroding more into their other social and spiritual life. So, what that means is that having a high societal or having, having a high societal status does not translate to a very good social life and does not translate to a good family life and neither does it translate to a good spiritual life. Not so it all. is very important to set boundaries between the work and the life. Or that aspect of our life. Jazakumullah khairan sahib. Jazakumullah khairan Mr. Abu Rahman sahib, having understood that the line between the work and life or between your job and your life is becoming more blurry especially with the advent of remote work where you can work um, from the convenience of your home a number of people have said that yes there is increased productivity with remote work so how do you think people can actually set boundaries. Do you think it is easy to set boundaries between your work and your life? Okay. Um, yes, it is possible and uh, to set boundaries between your work and your life. The way I always approach work-life balance is to look at it as another project or mm. I will even say the main project of life. Well, when mm. I talk about projects, we've all done projects in our under degree days um, in, in terms of um, uh, our undergraduate days, we've done um, a lot of projects in our postgraduate studies, the way we devote so much time to doing it. And that's because work takes a large chunk of our lives. So more than two third of our days are spent in work. The one, I mean, one third uh, is where you would then struggle to, I mean, sleep, take some rest, attend to family and all. So if you mess up that part, you can also be in trouble. So the first thing you need to do is to look at yourself as a human being and say, you know, we are working to live. We are not living to work. So, Life is the first thing, but because like Dr. Sonny uh, rightly alluded, because to maintain a good life, you need to pay your bills, you need to maintain a good social status, you need to maintain your family and all that, you need to work. So work is just a part of life, it's not the full package. You now need to ask yourself, what are your major goals in life? What are the things that you cannot compromise? For instance, um, as Amadis, your major goal in life, of course, is to have high spiritual uh, level and be able to meet your creator, develop spiritually. But again, you also want to look at what are the other things in life that make you mm. happy. Do you want to be taking vacation every quarter? Do you want to be taking your family out? Do you have a favorite football team that you want to be watching live? you know, I'm going to the stadium to watch. You need to look at those major things and put them first so that you yeah. look at it and say, even if I cannot achieve every other thing, this one I will achieve. So you need to practice effective time management and say, how should you manage your time? We all have 24 hours, but it now seems that some people have more time to do other things than other people because the other people are squandering away their time. So you need to plan your life maintain a to-do list, maybe monthly, to say this month I must achieve this, or this week I must achieve this. And this thing about multitasking, we also need to be careful because every time we say, I want to be doing this and this and that at the same time, you end up messing up your whole life. So why not do one thing at a time? And in terms of setting boundaries that you, you mentioned, you need to understand that as a human being, you matter. Taking care of your life, in your introduction earlier, you talk about self-care. As a human being, you need to take care of yourself. Don't set your needs after that of others and say you must take care of others first. And when I mean others, your employer is part of others. 
your customers are part of others. But what mm -hmm. about you? Why are you the last thing that you put on the on, on, on the on, on the on the list? So you need to have okay. a good self-esteem and know that you matter. Speak up again when you are having too much work. So if you're an employee and your employer is giving you too much work, rather than trying to impress your employer with always delivering, learn to always say no and say, you know what, I cannot do this. It's too much. I need to do less work so that I'm able to do a very so good job. The important, yeah. the important thing here is we work to live and we do not live to work. So everything you do, you must look at how it affects your life, how it affects yeah. your well-being, and how it affects everything that has that associated with your life. Because if you break down, definitely work continues, and um, of course, someone else will take the job. Well, so you have to take care of yourself. So Jazakumullah Khairan yeah. for um, that um, valuable insight. Dr. Sahim. We understand that, yes, there is a need for every individual to maintain a healthy work balance. You must prioritize your health. You must ensure that you live well. But with the growth of the workplace, as the workplace continues to change, it is noticed that maintaining the healthy work-life balance, especially in this digital age, because apart from attending to your work. You also have so many things you have to do on social media. You have to attend to emails and messages and a lot more. So do you think employers have roles to play in how employees maintain a healthy work-life work balance? Yeah, all right, yes. Employers have a great role to play. And they will play this role, not because they want to be merciful on the employee alone, but because they know that the health, health of the employee is also important for the productivity in their own employment. Mm -hmm. So if you overuse your employee, his productivity will go down. But if you use him well elderly, his productivity will go up and the employer will also benefit. So the employer has a role to play. And with the way the... Uh, International Labor Organization, organized work. They've done it in such a way that we have 24 hours in a day. It is expected medically that you sleep for between six to eight hours. That would be one third of the 24 hours. It's also mm -hmm. expected that you should not work more than eight hours in a day, maybe between eight o'clock and four o'clock, depending on the country where you are, so that the remaining eight hours can then be used to take care of your social life, your family life, and other activities. So mm -hmm. if we divide the 24 hours in a day to 24. We should not work more than one third of that period. Hmm. Use the remaining one third to rest. Why we use the remaining one third? To attend to other social needs, the spiritual needs, the family needs, and all that. If we do that, we will stay elderly and hmm. will not have any problem because having enough rest is will also give you good health. Mm -hmm. And because we also have another eight hours to so take care of families, friends, religion, even if we are sick, we can use that period to also attend to our health, go to the hospital, see a doctor, take sick leave if that, if that is necessary and all that. So employers should design their work in such a way that employee doesn't use more than eight hours at work. Even within that eight hours, there should be a rest. There should be a siesta. People in other countries so, may have coffee break, have other breaks. Have so what, what, what you are trying to say is, there is a possibility of better productivity if the employers allow their employees to work within the time frame of eight hours yes. rather than overuse them and they feel a lot of fatigue and at the end of the day they become complacent in the workplace. In fact, it has also been said that when you overuse your workers, the tendency of occupational accident increases. Those work with machine may lose concentration, make mistakes in what they do, or even injure themselves. And once they injure themselves, it's also a problem on the employee, employer exactly. because you need to also take care of the health of that person. And when that person is injured and is, is in the hospital, apart from paying bills, that person too will not be at work. 
right. at that point in time. So if you use your employee effectively within a short period of time and they are productive, the employer tends to gain more and the employee too will live a healthy life. And everybody benefits at the end of the day. Mr. Brahman Sahib, we understand that we are in a technology era. We are in an era of technology. And um, like I said earlier, apart from your work life, you also have a number of um, activities to attend to on your phone, on your personal computers and all. So how do you think technology can be of help to the proper um, work-life balance, um, work balance or, or do you think the technology can be an hindrance to maintaining a healthy work-life balance? Okay, thank you for that question. I, I, I like it. Um, well, before I answer that question, just to add uh, my voice to the previous question about what can employers do, Sometimes some employers are very deliberate in enforcing work-life balance in that they make you compulsively go on leave when they think that you are working too much and you may burn out quickly. Mm -hmm. So they will force you to go on leave. Some employers will also organize some, um, some activities, you know, extracurricular, you may call them. Things that will take people out of work, you know, go for things that they love to do, sports, Olympics, and the rest. So a lot of things that employers can do uh, intentionally to make sure that their employees have work-life balance. And like you said, it helps all of us in achieving better productivity. Now, back to your question about technology. Definitely, um, we are in the technological age. And in your intro, you also talked about the fact that the boundaries are getting glory day by day. I mean, the whole thing, I mean, work-life balance conversation has been on for a while, I mean, several decades ago, but even with the COVID-19 uh, um, incident, that has now, the focus has now increased more because we are now seeing ourselves working from home, virtual working and all that. But in terms of what technology can help us to do for work-life balance is the fact that you can actually work from home, work from home, is something, depending on how you do it, so work from home is something that helps us with work-life balance because what that means is you can actually be anywhere and be attending to your work. If you have somebody that a large chunk of your work deals with attending to emails, for instance, if you have your emails on your mobile device, you can be at your child's event in school and attend to your email. You can, you know, take care of your other needs, run some errand, do school runs, do so many other things you can do for your family while you are still working. As long as the work is done, really, this, these days, nobody really cares about where you are getting Wi-Fi, as long as we can see Does that you are that. delivering on the job. So technology helps. But the, the downside of it is that the boundaries are now blurry. We are not able to now shut down from work anymore in the sense that we work, we don't have eight to five work anymore. You work from any time, you don't close, you send emails, you keep working, and we are burning out. So the point, because work can be done every time, there is no, the gone are the days where you need to be in the office, the physical building, before you can work. But now you have your home office, <laughs> such that even at so, home, you are working, and that has negatively affected our work-life balance. Jazakumullah wa khairan. So, as important as it is for us to uh, embrace technological advancement, we must also be wary of the downside. So that as much as, yes, we have the opportunity to work from home, it does not mean at all times when you're at home, you have to be at work. So when it is time for work, you continue to work. And when it is time to rest, you take your rest so that you still maintain your healthy work-life balance. Dr. Sahib, yeah. our guests have listened to quite a number of very uh, important discussions. But what do you, in very short sentence, what do you want to leave our audience with? All right, thank you very much. I just want the audience to know that to balance work with life is very important because the relationship between work and life is uh, 
a like a cycle. When you have a good work, you have a good life. When you also have a good life, there's tendency that you have a good work because you'll be employable and you'll be able to also be productive. Therefore, we must do everything to balance our work with life. Then we must look at ourselves and know our limitations. How long can I work? How much will I generate? How much will that sustain my family? And how much rest do I need? What is even my health status? Our health status are different. So people are even moving around with medical conditions already. Such people have to take it slow, also work to get money to buy their medications, hmm. but at the same time, take enough rest, visit the hospital and be regular on their medication. So individuals must sit down to appraise him or herself and look at where lines must be done. And also yearly, we must evaluate this. What you can do 10 years ago may not be what you'll be able to do this year or 10 years to come. So on yearly basis, we should also appraise ourselves. Am I not getting tired? Can I do as much as I was doing in those days? Do I need to make some changes? Do I need to even retire from work now? Do I have enough savings? Those are the things that should run through our minds. So as we work, we should also remember that at a point, we will not be able to work again. Mm. The health will not be there for us. The strength will not be there. So we must also be saving enough for those days when we now need to sit down, rest, and enjoy all the goods we've done during our work uh, period. So it's a plan that individuals must have. And when we have this, we live a very fruitful life. Yeah. Mr. Abu Rahman Sahib, what do you want to leave our viewers with? Thank you. Um, we need to start living properly, hmm. having good life. We cannot afford to be overworking and be under living. We matter as ourselves, and like uh, Dr. Sandy said, he is a medical doctor. And he has said, if you are not working properly, I mean, if you are not living your life, doing too much work, not giving time to rest, not giving time to attend to other things, you may end up losing your health. And health is something that is so important to everybody. Mm. Lastly, I will say, you need to set proper boundaries. You need to know when to log off. You need to know when to speak up and tell your employer, you know what? No, I cannot do this. I'm not able to do this because I don't work at this time. Because I'm on vacation, I cannot attend to this. So you need to be able to draw that line. Take notes, like the presenter said earlier. If you drop off or if your health fails, your employer will get you replaced. Okay? So you need to put yourself first. As much as you need to do a good job, okay? As a Muslim, you need to do a good job, distinguish yourself in your career, get to the top of your career. But that cannot be at the expense of your life and your life goals, which you need to set right and you need to prioritize. Jazakumullah wa khairan, Mr. Abu Rahman Musa. And Jazakumullah wa khairan, Dr. Salim Sahib. Maintaining a healthy work-life balance is indeed very important. It is when you are alive, that you have the opportunity to take on tasks. When you are no more, what task would you take on? Of course, none. So it's important that you evaluate what you can do. Know what you can do, know yourself. Do a SWOT analysis of, your, of yourself. Know your strengths, know your weaknesses. Know the challenges you have. Know things that would affect your life so that at the end of the day, you know things you can do and things you cannot do, things you are supposed to do, and things you are not supposed to do. Do not say because you want to have a good life, deprive your family the good life they also deserve. Jazakumullah khairan to our viewers for being with us throughout this show. May Allah continue to be with us all. For questions, comments, and observations, please reach out to us via africa at mta.tv. To meet again, I, will, I remain your host, Abdul Qadir Ismail Uluwa Gwimiga. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Jab tak amal nahi hai दिल पाको साफ से जब तक अमल नहीं है दिल पाको साफ से
से कमतर नहीं ये मश गलाबुत के तवाफ से कमतर नहीं ये मश गलाबुत के तवाफ से